Hello growers, I'm Dr. MJ Coco from CocoForCannabis.com. I'm excited to bring you a grow light unboxing, par test, and review of the Spider Farmer SF2000. Grow light par testing is part of our grow light guide project. We're collaborating with Shane from MyGro to conduct unsponsored and unbiased grow light tests and reviews. Check out our grow light articles, our grow light calculator, and all of the grow light par test reports from Coco for Cannabis and MyGro. Links are in the description. Today I'm testing the Spider Farmer SF2000. It arrived from Spider Farmer in a plain brown box with no indication that it was a grow light. You open it there, but you gotta lay it down and slide it out of the box. Comes pretty well protected. It has this top section and it lifts apart in two pieces and there we go. Comes with hanging hardware. I'll show you that when we hang it up in just a second. Let's pick it up and see what we got. This is a nice light. It has top quality components with Samsung LM301B diodes and a mean well driver. The chips are mounted on the steel plate which acts as a heat sink. It is a sleek and simple fixture with a few special features that may really appeal to some growers. Notably, it includes infrared chips and is water resistant, which is great if you foliar feed your plants and inadvertently spray your lights. The mean well driver is mounted on the top of the steel plate. And the current model now features a controllable module that can dim multiple lights. The model that I'm testing is not equipped with this feature. It measures 25 inches by 11 inches. It comes fully assembled and really couldn't be easier. The only other thing in the box is the user manual, which just provides some information about the light. But I'm excited to give it a par test, so let's get it set up in our testing rig. Welcome to the Coco for Cannabis Grow Light Testing Station. I will discuss the testing surface and other elements of our testing protocol, but first I gotta get the SF2000 hung up and turned on, because it has to warm up for at least 30 minutes before the PAR test. It's one of the more intuitive fixtures to hang up. It comes with all the hanging hardware you need, including ratchet pulleys and steel cables with clips. The steel plate on the fixture has holes near each corner, and you simply clip the cables into those holes and then attach the ratchet pulleys to those cables. And there you go, we're hanging up. All right, now we just have to plug it into the power meter and turn it on. And there we go, a pleasant white light overall. It's our first chance to see the diodes. You know, LED chips are more efficient when they are cold. Therefore, our protocol requires warming the fixture up before taking our PPFD measurements. While we're waiting for the fixture, Let's review the data on the Spider Farmer SF2000. All right, here we are on the Spider Farmer website. You can see the current price is just about $300, but you can use discount code CCFC to reduce that slightly and help support our work. Here you can see the dimming feature that they have on the newest models that was not included on the model that I tested. They provide some other things. They provide some PAR maps. But unfortunately, their PAR maps are measured in an empty grow tent, and when you measure lights in an empty grow tent with a reflective floor, you will overcount the photons because there's nothing to absorb them. However, there are some key statistics that they provide that will help us to estimate the power of the fixture. If we scroll down the page here, we'll find a number of things in their features. The first thing we should note is that the manufacturer suggests a flowering footprint of two foot by four foot. This is important to keep in mind, however it's the power and efficiency data that will allow us to do our calculations. We need to note that the fixture draws 200 watts and has an efficiency rating of 2.7 micromoles per joule. It is important to realize this isn't actually the efficiency of the fixture, it's the efficiency of the chips. The final fixture will have a lower efficiency, mainly because of the driver efficiency and thermal losses. However, we have a tool to help estimate how the final fixture will actually perform. Welcome to the Coco for Cannabis Grow Light Calculator. We developed this calculator to help growers analyze grow lights. You can take the manufacturer data, like what we gathered from Spider Farmer, and use it to estimate what the fixture will actually produce in your grow space. I'm going to enter the data about the SF2000, and then we can compare the calculator's estimates to what I actually measure in the PAR test. All right, so the power draw was 200 watts, the cost was $300, 
and the only other data that we need to enter for the calculator is about the photosynthetic photon flux. There's three options in the calculator, calculated, total, or usable PPF. Since we know the data that we're working with came from calculations from the chips, we're going to use calculated PPF, which is most manufacturer's data. We enter 2.7 there, and you can see the calculator spits out numbers about the estimated usable PPF, 396, the photon efficiency of 1.98, obviously lower than the manufacturer's claim of 2.7. The calculator also provides a cost efficiency of just 76 cents per micromole, which is very good. It provides data on coverage, on our estimated coverage, and on the estimated harvest potential. I want to point out the estimated coverage because the calculator is suggesting that this fixture will only cover about six square feet, whereas the manufacturer recommends it for eight square feet. We're going to go ahead and add this fixture to the comparison table, and I'm going to call this the Spider Farmer SF2000, or just the SF2000 calculated data. Go ahead and add that to our comparison table, and you'll be able to see. We'll store this for later. The comparison table is just a way for you to be able to keep track and directly look at different fixtures. So we have it there with all of its most relevant data. All right, we'll come back to compare after we do the part test. Before we get to that, I want to just point out a couple of things about our grow light testing protocol. As you can see, all our grow light guide resources are available through the menu. If you have questions about any of the terminology or any of the stuff that I'm doing here in this PAR test, I'm sure you'll be able to find the answer there. I want to take you to our grow light testing protocol. We thought a lot about the best way to test grow lights and to develop a testing protocol to recreate the conditions that most growers actually grow in. Our protocol is the result of a lot of research and discussion and came together in collaboration with Shane from My Grow Lighting. We talk about the difference between laboratory testing, which tests total PPF, and our field testing, which is designed to test usable PPF, those photons that actually arrive to the canopy of your plants. We go through a number of other issues in our testing protocol, defining the optimal usable PPF. We talk about the importance of coverage area and provide different PAR maps to show how coverage area changes intensity and densities of light talk about the importance of reflective walls, we talk about the importance of hanging height and provide a series of PAR maps from a fixture hung at different heights. And then we talk about our actual cocoa for cannabis and migro grow light testing protocol. I wanna point out a few things and I wanna start with our block non-reflective simulated canopy. The testing surface is our simulated canopy. And if it were an actual canopy of plants, those plants would absorb the PAR photons that strike them. A lot of PAR tests are done with a reflective floor and a reflective ceiling in a grow tent. And what happens is the photons hit the floor, they bounce off, they hit the ceiling, they bounce off the floor and the ceiling until they eventually hit the sensor. And that leads to an overcount. So we do not want a reflective floor, but we need to have mylar reflective walls. These mylar reflective walls are just like the walls of your grow tent. They prevent overspill losses by redirecting photons back towards the canopy. I use VivoSun diamond pattern mylar stretched over foam board panels. It's important to note that we use the Apogee SQ500 quantum sensor, which is really the only sensor on the market that's adequate for testing LED grow lights in a reflective environment. All right, the next thing we need to do is figure out our test area size. Now we know from the grow light calculator that we expect a usable PPF of 396. Our grow light testing area sizes here suggest that 396 is going to be, for that form factor, a 60 by 120 centimeter, or 2 by 4 grow space. That's what Spider Farmer recommends as well, but remember, this is at the lower end of that 300 to 700 range, so we should keep that in mind as we test the fixture. To determine the appropriate hanging height, we set the fixture up in that grow space and then measure PPFD. We will raise or lower the fixture until the maximum PPFD reading is up to, but not over, 1,000 micromoles. All right, let's go run a PAR test. First, we need to set up our Mylar panel walls in a 2x4 configuration. And as I'm setting up these walls, I'm attaching the corners together to prevent light leaks out those sides. There we go. We got our 2x4 foot space created. And now I need to measure to make sure that the fixture is properly centered within that grow testing space. 
As I'm doing this, I have a couple of levels set up on the back of the fixture, which is helping me keep it level. Now that I've got it, yep, it's all well hung in the center. Okay, so I check the PPFD and I see that it needs to be lowered slightly to get up to my just under 1,000 reading that I'd like in the center. All right, there we go. I think we got it. All right, there you can see I have a reading of 988, which is pretty good. And there's my sensor sitting in the tent. I'm going to take a height reading at this point. I got 39 centimeters or 15 and a half inches. And we're going to go ahead and call that the optimal hanging height. Now I'm just moving the sensor around to make sure that I can't find a higher PPFD reading. Sometimes the highest reading is a little off center. All right, let's do the par test. Take a reading with the sensor from the middle of each of these squares. And the sensor is there on the green circle. It's not the white thing. The white thing is the transponder. I'll record a PPFD reading in each and every square as we come around. And we'll get to see the PAR map that that test created. All right, here's our PAR map for the Spider Farmer SF2000. I designed these PAR maps to be able to really visualize the distribution of the density of light. And with this map, you can really see it. The middle half of the map is perfect with values from 567 up to 949. However, each end of the PAR map is less than adequate with values below 500. Remember, the calculator estimated that this fixture would cover about six square feet. And I'm confident if we retested it in a two foot by three foot area, it would produce a much better distribution of light. All right, the next step in this process is to convert this PPFD data into usable PPF. First, we have to take the average PPFD, which across this PAR map is 572.6. Then we have to multiply that by the test area in square meters. Our test area is 0.72 square meters, which multiplied by 572.6 yields a usable PPF of 412.3. All right, before we're gonna be able to do anything else with that, we gotta check the power. So I got the light fixture plugged into our power meter over here, and it's sort of fluctuating between 200 and 201 watts. We're gonna go ahead and call it 201 watts. Cool, now we got all the data that we need, so let's go back to the grow light calculator, and we're gonna put it in. We got 201 watts. Fixture still costs $300. And now we need to select a different kind of PPF data. The data that I'm entering now comes from our PAR test, which measures usable PPF. So I select usable PPF and I'm gonna put 412.3 into our micromole field. And you'll note that, that the calculator doesn't make adjustments to it. It says 412.3, but look down here. We have a photon efficiency of 2.05. That is a superior photon efficiency. And it comes in a fixture with a cost efficiency of only 73 cents per micromole. You'll note that the calculator suggests a 6.3 square foot coverage and that you could harvest up to 309 grams or 11 ounces. All right, let's go ahead and add this measured data to our comparison table and we'll be able to compare it with the calculated data that we put there before. So we'll call this the SF2000 with measured data. Go ahead and hit enter and let's go check out the comparison table. All right, we got the calculated data from the manufacturer's website that we used to estimate using the calculator, and now we have our field measured data. And you'll see right off the bat, we have a usable PPF of 396 versus 412, or a photon efficiency of 1.98 versus 2.05. Now, our calculator slightly underestimated this fixture um, just by about 3.9%. So the fixture outperformed our estimates. And that's an indication of the quality components, especially the mean well driver. Of course, the data that everybody cares about is how much you can harvest. And, you know, we calculated just under and we measured based on PPF just over 300 grams, which is really good from a fixture that only draws 200 watts from the wall. All right, when you come to the grow light calculator, you won't have to enter the data about the Spider Farmer SF2000 because we have it loaded as one of our preloaded fixtures. All of the fixtures that we test 
are loaded in this drop down menu. And you can see it's got the same data that we just showed. You have the 201 measured watts. You can enter your cost again, $300, get that 73 cents per micromole. Our 205, our coverage, and our harvest potential. And with all of our tested fixtures, you can get to our test results page by clicking on the link right in the bottom of the calculator. Here we go, the Spider Farmer SF2000 test report page. For each fixture that we test, we generate these pages. And you can get to them through the calculator or through any of these drop down menus. The video will be at the top, but I'm still working on the narration. The main selling point of the Spider Farmer SF2000 is the efficiency. It generates a usable PPF of 412.3 using only 201 watts. As we saw with the calculator, this is a superior photon efficiency of 2.05 micromoles per watt. We can enter a $300 cost to get 73 cents per micromole for a fixture to exceed 2 in micromoles per watt and get less than 75 cents per micromole is truly exceptional. We also show the harvest information, the ideal hanging height, the coverage, and list all of the PAR data here just below that, and of course provide the PAR map which you can expand to look at in more depth. I'll show you a couple of other things on our test report page. You can enter the size of your grow space here. So let's say we have a four by eight foot grow space. That would mean that we'd need a usable PPF of 2080. We would need just about five Spider Farmer SF2000s and it will show us the total cost since we've entered the cost above. Down below there, you'll find my review. And overall, I think this is a great high efficiency fixture. It's just a little underpowered for the four by two grow space that it's sold to cover. I think if you want to put only 200 watts into a 4x2 tent, then this is a great light. However, if you want to be fully lit, and who doesn't, then I would plan for the SF2000 to cover only about 6 square feet, an area of about 3 foot by 2 foot. Near the bottom of our test report pages, you can find our links for shopping. You know, Cocoa for Cannabis Grow Light Testing is unsponsored and unbiased. We do not get paid for testing lights. But we do earn commissions when you make purchases through our links. Our goal is to provide reliable science-based testing and reviews for home growers. You can support our work simply by following our links when you purchase a grow light. I'd like to thank Spider Farmer for spending me the light to test. And now, we plan to give the light away to one of you. You can register to win the SF2000 fixture that I tested right here on the test report page. Registration is open for US residents only and runs through July 10th, 2020. Please like the video and subscribe to my channel. If you're interested in grow light testing, you should also subscribe to the MyGrow YouTube channel. You can follow me on Instagram at Dr. MJ Coco and follow Shane at MyGrow Light. I hope you come to visit us at CocoForCannabis.com. We are dedicated to the science and practice of growing cannabis. You can chat with our community, browse the grow light test reports, and try your hand at the grow light calculator. Don't forget to register for the SF2000 giveaway and stay tuned for more grow light par tests coming very soon. The Mars Hydro TSL 2000 is coming next. I'm Dr. MJ Coco, sending grower love to everyone.